It's coming up in the big story. A satirical website that's making the New York Times crazy. The Times push, but the little guy pushed back. That story ahead. Coming up in the big story, a parody website for the New York Times has the gray lady smoking mad. We'll have all the news that's unfit to print. Coming up on the big story, all the news unfit to print. A website featuring a corrections page for the New York Times sued by the great lady itself. Now the underdog biting back. Just Mr. Bernstein, in. I'd like you to meet Mr. Thatcher. I'll just How do you do, Mr. Thatcher? Leland, uh, Hello. Mr. Thatcher, my ex-guardian. We have no secrets from our readers, Mr. Bernstein. Mr. Thatcher is one of our most devoted readers. He knows what's wrong with every copy of the Inquirer since I took over. Day two. Newspapers have always had their critics. The New York Times is no exception. But the Times did take exception to a parody on the Internet, even threatening legal action. After a couple of days, however, the great and mighty New York Times backed down. Robert Cox is managing editor of the NationalDebate.com. That's today's big question. So how does a little guy, that'd be you, beat a giant like the New York Times? Uh, very carefully and with a good lawyer. Well, yeah, you, you, you did not want to fight with the New York Times, did you? Uh, it was Even, I mean, you, first of all, what did you do? You, you, your page layout seemed to them to be a little too close to their layout, right? Well, in fact, it uh, is, is very close to their layout, and uh, that's, uh, that's you were their, talking about. Their, their point, but the point of a good satire is, is that it shouldn't be staring you in the face. It should have a little... And what you were doing on this website was, was correcting misinformation or faulty information that columnists and news reporters have perpetrated on the public in the pages of the New York Times. Well, since the Jason Blair scandal broke, uh, they've actually made improvements at the Times, and they hired a public editor, and they have uh, taken some steps in the right direction. But the one area that they have failed to now do anything... your website on the left, by the way, and the, the real Times on the right. You can see it kind of looks alike. Kind of looks alike, yeah, a little bit. I understand their point. I mean, I know why they called. Um, but uh, the, the real issue is with all the changes they made at the Times, they didn't make any change for the people like Paul Krugman and Maureen Dowd and the others who write for the op-ed page. And they just let them misstate things? Uh, they are allowed to decide for themselves whether or not to issue a correction, and uh, guess what? They don't make many. All right. Now, so, uh, okay, fair enough. That's your gig. Uh, we all appreciate it. Uh, meanwhile, you get a call from the New York Times legal department, which is probably bigger than most small-town newspapers. Yeah. And they growled or snarled or took a bite out of you? What? Uh, well, they sent me a letter saying, we insist you take down your website. And uh, I laughed and said, well, insist away, because that's not going to do anything. Unfortunately, they sent a letter to my internet provider, and they told them, shut it down or we'll shut it down for you. And uh, I was facing a deadline of a couple of days, and uh, ultimately I had to take the page down. Okay, so you did now. Now, this is where the story gets interesting, because riding to your rescue yeah. was the entire internet community. So they can't do that to Cox. We're going to spread this around in defiance of the New York Times. Well, it would have been a lot lonelier weekend for a bunch of people I never met before on the internet, but to rally to my defense. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, within a day or two, there was uh, websites uh, parodying my parody uh, in uh, Germany, Canada, the United States. And uh, from what I understand, the Times was taking a look at them too. And, and, uh, and they looked at them and decided there's too many, uh, too many people to fight. Uh, the analogy I heard that sounded good was uh, sort of squeezing mercury. All right, so, so the Times, after threatening you, threatening to put you out of business, scaring you to death with all of their mighty lawyers, threatening to cause you to have to put your lawyers to work and go broke, they backed down. Well, they backed down after they got a letter from my lawyer who quoted an excellent source on First Amendment parody, which was the New York Times itself, who has written numerous editorials defending people just like me. Uh-huh. And so it was... So what was your final... How did you finally know the New York Times had given up and you had won? Well, they actually posted it on their website. Uh, what did they say? Kind of nice. They said, uh, basically, uh, we agree that your website is a parody for the purpose of the First Amendment and it's protected. And therefore, uh, although we don't like it and we hate you and you can never work here, we're not going to sue you. I don't know if they hate me, but uh, I probably won't get invited to the Christmas party. Okay, so <laughs> what does this prove to you about either the New York Times or the Internet or First Amendment rights? Uh, well, what it shows me is, is that the playing field is a little different than it was five years ago. That uh, someone like me, who's very small, 
does have an opportunity to stand up to big media if they can get their message out. And there are a bunch of people out there uh, on the Internet who are willing to help do that. So there is a, a, a venue for someone like me. And uh, there's a few people in the media and the big media who are willing to help take on the Times. Congratulations. I just have uh, two words for you. Three words. Los Angeles Times. Okay. Them next. Robert Cox. Appreciate it very much. <laughs> Still having the big story. American missionaries killed in Iraq.